Hal, how's it going? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Things are turning around, dude. Yeah. I'm hitting my stride. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm thinking about you and you go, your, your um, role, it's kind of like the normal Hollywood path, right? You wrote and produced and starred in your first movie at 18 years old about um, growing up in the suburbs of Sydney and then go to the US, nail your first ever audition and get a role in this mega franchise and a great one at that. Silas, you play incredibly well. And then go back to Australia um, during a pandemic, no less, and get a role in Nine Perfect Strangers in this uh, Hulu tentpole series. What has been going on with you? I love how excited you are for that. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome. It's very good for someone like me who's extremely lazy. So <laughs> I just got that first audition. Um, yeah, it's awesome, dude. It's I'm so fucking grateful to be in this position. Like. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was lazy in the last few years of high school and then just started working at a shirt printing factory. And I was like, well, it was sort of like a charity. It was actually like a good thing, but it just made me realize I went, oh no, like I can't do this. Like I um, was so bored in school. Like I got to do something crazy. I don't, so I just set out that I was going to write. Um, I was going to make use of being young and that people would be, willing to help or more willing to help an 18 year old than a 25 year old. So I just went crazy, worked like 20 hours a day, slept four hours of it. Like it was my absolute baby and my ticket out of mediocrity um, that I somehow we made a film that people seem to like in Australia and hopefully we'll be on streamers soon. Once we sort out some backroom issues that happen when you're making a movie at 18 and don't know what you're fucking doing. <laughs> But um, yeah, it, things are awesome. Like then at the tail end of that, getting this audition was just like a dream, like so lucky, so incredibly lucky. And I, yeah. And then obviously as well, yeah, I, Nine Perfect Strangers, like ridiculous. My dad's Michael Shannon. Yeah, I was going to say, well, you're both tall. Yeah, he's taller than me though, which is weird because I don't, I'm, yeah, usually I'm not, I'm like, I don't know. Well, I'm not, not the tallest, but actors tend to be a lot smaller than you think. I like get surrounded by lots of very small people. So then you meet a tall actor and you're like, oh shit, okay. Uh, yeah, let's talk life is fucking awesome. Yeah, let's talk about the physicality in terms of um, Walking Dead World Beyond because certainly with Silas, you have to use that physicality, use that, that strength that you have, the, um, the height, but you, maybe in a way that you see that we're not quite sure who Silas is, you know? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Can we trust him? And then when we dip into your history, we can sort of see that play out. How do you approach the character? You know, what's your starting point? Um, that's an interesting thing. It was quite a long time ago now, so I can't remember it like vividly, but I do remember that I sort of like, I, I had somewhat of a, the, the audition for the show was quite different to um, like, I guess the actual, filming of it in that also as well my my accent I rewatched it the other day my accent drops out like seven times in my audition we filmed it at 3 a.m once when we were editing my film and I just like I like sort of knew the lines and I was like all right fuck it I'm just gonna like go crazy in this because they say that he's got like a dark side that like there's a click and then the anger goes so I just like grab my friend in the self tape and I'm like throwing him up against the wall like thanks to Fred I probably he's gonna have spinal injury in like a few years because of that but um yeah, I think I just, like, once I got the script, I got well, I got a few scripts at the start and I just got an idea for who he was. And also as well, it wasn't just all me. I got to talk to, you know, Scott Kimball and Matt Negretti, like, for at length, like, just, like, dissecting the character and whatnot. And this was, again, dream come true. I was like, are you kidding? I'm getting paid for this? And, like, I'm seriously going along, like, having to set aside time to think about what this character is going to be. But, like, I got the idea of it. He had a bunch of childhood trauma so he's just not the full um deck of cards you know what i mean he has little like blips in his brain i guess where he hasn't had the liberty to develop into like a full like a normal um teenager i guess or teenager adult guy you'd said that your favorite episode was uh eight where silas is sort of on trial and we see a little bit of that backstory um we got a chance to talk with nico 
and really enjoyed that. What did you don't share too many scenes, but a few. What do you what do you like best about working with them? Um, yeah. So yeah, funnily enough, me and as I found as me and Nico were getting better friends on set. I think they started um, like writing like just little conversations for our characters to have because we were just always mucking around on set. And I ended up moving into um, an apartment one below him. So I'm really good friends with Nico and it's just a whole lot of fun. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to go like, all right, stop like looking at each other. Cause you, when you're good enough friends with someone, you just look at their face and you go to start laughing. And then you go, no, I'm in a TV show. This is very expensive. Shut up, Hal, don't like laugh on camera. But um, besides that, it's just fun because he's, uh, very like not scared of like improving or going where the scene is going or being weird that it's like I don't know if I want to give them a compliment and compliment of he keeps me on my toes but it's definitely there's not a set path which is a fun thing to do like I have so much fun in that it's probably not fun for the editors doing continuity but it's a whole lot of fun for us mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite scenes to play in particular what do you what do you get the most joy out of doing on camera? Um, I think I was, I was talking about this yesterday. <clears throat> it's probably not like the best um, type of acting, but it is so incredibly fun when I just get to literally just lose, like lose my mind and just go absolute like aggression and madness. Like um, that is just fun and freeing because it's just so ridiculous and you just like let out. I think it's almost like therapeutic as well. It's probably good. It keeps me sane and low status in normal life that I'm able to just every now and then get in front of a camera and go insane. Yeah, I feel like that probably that. I mean, in reality, I would kill to end up in a position where I'm doing like the type of improv comedy movies that they made in the 80s, 90s and mid 2000s. That's probably the like the ultimate goal, but yeah, for the time being, going crazy in front of a camera is just like so far. Yeah, your your movie is, is is comedic, but it's also you know satiric as well too. What do you take from that? And you know, being a writer and a producer into your subsequent projects. Um, I think it's good that you're a little less. I'm, I was a little less sheltered, like because I'd done every single. I I had a hand in like every single job when I was on set, like. There's no, when you're working on an indie film, just because I'm the producer or the actor and the writer, that doesn't mean that when we need to go find a costume or go find a shirt for this person over here, that doesn't mean that I'm like, <clears throat> you know, running 10 minutes home, going through like all the costume bags and trying to find the shirt, but it just gave you an idea of how many moving pieces there are that come down. And then it's just like the actors need to turn up and say their lines so the story makes sense. I guess it just is good to have an idea of how much goes into it. <clears throat> and also, I guess, start the process of learning. How do I get, how do I get myself in a position where I can be acting and making movies for the rest of like my life? Mm -hmm. I think it's good. I think it's a, yeah, it's just a handy thing as well, just to not be too um, in like the acting bubble where everyone's super nice to you and you get driven here and there. And then you get, have to wait in your trailer for half an hour longer because the scene's going and then you start complaining. It's like, it's good to understand all the moving parts. So, you, I don't know, you're less of a dick because you definitely can see how people can end up being dicks um, mm -hmm. as actors, I guess. Well, I just want to say you've done incredible work on this series. I cannot wait to see where it goes in its second season. I can't wait to see you in Nine Perfect Strangers and your Thank film you. as well, too. I can't wait to see that. You're really awesome. just killing it in the industry and I can't wait to see where you go from here. Thank you, Charles. It was very nice of you. Nice talking to you.